Hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Laura and this is my YouTube channel. It's called I Heart Knitting and I am going to be sharing some crafty things with you today. Um, a few knitting projects that I've been working on and I think I'm going to show you a little, um, just give you a little show. <laughs> I'm going to show you um, some of the bags that are in the Etsy shop still from the last update, um, just in case you were curious. So we'll see how timing goes, but that'll be at the end, the Etsy stuff. And uh, yeah, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I am feeling a lot better now that spring is kind of th threatening to show up on um, the West Coast here where I live. I live in uh, the Gulf Islands, BC, Canada. So we're just starting to see like daffodils up here. It's, uh, I think it's the 16th of March today. Yeah. So we're just starting to see daffodils pop up and some of the really early spring bulbs. We have kind of like a long, slow spring here. So like, if you're curious, I'm gardening right now. So I'm really into the temperatures and stuff right now. We're looking at, it's like more like 10 degrees during the day. And you can see when the sun's out, it's really nice out there. Uh, I really need to get out there this afternoon and then like overnight it's been like zero degrees celsius so we're just kind of right on the line I have some seedlings started um, that are out in my like cold frame outside um, you know my greenhouse but it's not heated and I've just been watching those nighttime temperatures because I really want to put them out but I'm like oh it's a little cold <laughs> so anyways spring is trying to show up here and that's just wonderful like oh man did we need it I um we had a really long you know winter and not that it wasn't um nice to be all cozy and happy and I really spent a ton of time in my craft room I've been parked on that couch a lot when I'm not working at the table and um not that that wasn't all wonderful but oh I'm just so excited for spring and especially for summer um Oh, we're just really hoping to get out and do some camping and just kind of get out. Um, we've been really, really cooped up. And as I said, we live on like a small island. There's uh, 2,500 people here about. Um, so it's it's not a big place. <laughs> and we haven't been leaving the island very often. So um, I got my hair cut. I told you that last time. I'm kind of fussing with it, but I love it. It feels so great. It feels so lightweight. I just washed it and dried it. Looks pretty good. I got some grays coming in, but I'm okay with that. They kind of, they blend. <laughs> I'm wearing my um, Lopi, one of my Lopi sweaters today. This is um, called Aftur, A-F-T-U-R. And I actually originally saw this pattern in a movie. Scarlett Johansson was wearing it. I don't remember what movie it was, but I saw it and I was like, oh, that's such a beautiful hand knit sweater. And hers was done in, I think they were done in like yellows, like slightly different colors than this one. Um, but I looked it up and I found it and it happened to be a free pattern. Um, so you can get this one online. So it's spelled A-F-T-U-R, but then you can also get it. I don't know where I put that book. You can also get it in this Knitting with Icelandic Wool book. So I bought this actually after I knit this and then I was flipping through and I realized it was that same pattern. Um, so yeah, so there's two options for that. I know I showed you this book before. Um, it's a really fantastic book, really beautiful. Um, I wanna show you a page, but there's too many instructions on it, so I won't. Um, so it has really beautiful photos and a lot of the classic kind of lopi patterns. Um, and some of them have been updated Anyways, great pattern. I've also knit another one out of that. I think it was just called Alifoss. That one I showed you around Christmas time. It has um, like a dark charcoal for the main color. And then there's like a star, star design with um, like neon pinks and neon greens and yellows. Yeah. So this is a great one. I've worn it a lot. It's, um, it's quite old actually. It's not quite old, but it's... Um, be like seven years old now because I remember knitting it when we were doing like a road trip we went up to Jasper Alberta and then down to visit our friend in Calgary and our friend doesn't live in Calgary anymore and he now has two children so 
it must be a while. Um, but it has just a little seed stitch edge here. Um, the wool just wears beautifully. This is this is the Alifoss or the, the Let Lopi. So it's the worsted weight, the lighter weight one. And um, yeah, I've just got like several blues and a green and a white in the yoke. There's kind of a teal color that blends in there. Um, but it's really beautiful and it's really warm and cozy. Um, I really, really like it. It's just a nice sweater. It gets a lot of wear, especially when it's cold out. I used to wear it to work all the time when I worked at the hardware store. Um, I wore it like all the time in the winter because it was just so warm and comfy. Um, if 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 the Icelandic wool bothers you, you know, I might not recommend choosing this wool, but if you are okay with a toothier wool, um, I would really recommend Lopi. It's a beautiful, it's just a beautiful, makes a beautiful fabric, especially the Let Lopi, where this is just kind of lightweight and it just hangs really nicely, but it's so, so warm, especially if you put like something long sleeved underneath a base layer, you're going to be so cozy and warm. And I think that's just to do with the way that the Icelandic wool is and the way that they spin it. So Icelandic sheep have like two different layers of wool on them and one of them is like highly highly waterproof and then the other one is like a shorter staple and softer I think. So they spin those two together and so you actually get the kind of waterproof properties of the sheep <laughs> in your sweater which I think is super cool. Um, Iceland is a cool like country in general. I've never visited there. My brother did um, probably around the year 2000 maybe. So yeah, I've always like been curious about like learning more about the Icelandic sheep, I guess, because, because of his trip there. And uh, then later on when I started knitting myself, I got really interested in Icelandic wool. I actually have... Um, like two, I think it's a pound of Icelandic wool that somebody gave me already carded and everything. And I really want to spin up yarn for a sweater for that. So maybe, maybe this year that'll happen. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. What have I been working on? Well, my shoulder's been bothering me a little bit. Um, I talked about this in my last video, how I have kind of injured my left shoulder. It's been kind of ongoing off and on. For like a good chunk of last year um, but I really aggravated it and <laughs> I had to just kind of slow down a little bit oh yeah so it's been like two and a half weeks and it's feeling so much better now that I haven't been pushing it um, but I think it's like a combination of like how I'm sleeping how I'm using my phone how I'm knitting and cutting fabric like they're all coming together I realized that I needed to either stop knitting or I needed to postpone my update so I decided to stop knitting and make sure that I got the update out and it's already a little better and I'm starting to knit again which is great I just kind of made myself slow down I didn't knit basically at all for like a week and then I started really really slowly like I'd pull something out and do a few rows on it or something like that so I do have some fun things to show you um, that I have kind of been working on just you know, I don't have like as much as you'd expect from three weeks away, unfortunately. <laughs> so I've been working a little bit on the nurtured sweater, but I think uh, the purling was part of um, my shoulder issue. I'm left-handed, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, I knit left-handed, so that's why this this arm is so angry. <laughs> but I've uh, so I put this aside, but I'm definitely making some progress on the body. This is the Nurtured Sweater by Andrea Mowry and I finished both the sleeves already and then this is the body and um, I'm using Knit Picks, what is it called? Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted and it's just this really beautiful natural eco-friendly wool. It's Oikotech certified. I talked about this a lot in my last um, like project update so um, if you miss that, you can go back and hear more about the yarn there. Um, but really happy with it. Looking forward to being able to work on it a bit more. I'm not sure what the word is. Looking forward to being able to knit on it a bit more like aggressively. 
aggressive knitting. I don't know. I want to be able to work on it and get some some real progress done on it instead of right now where I feel like I'm just kind of like tinking away at it every now and again. So, but first I have to heal. <laughs> first I have to get better. So, um, the other thing I've been working on, I've been doing a few rounds on this sock. I think when I pulled it out, I was on the heel. And so I turned the heel and did a few little stripes. And uh, I really love this colorway. This is Knit Picks Felici yarn. It's in the summer camp colorway. A lot of their colorways are like only available once. So I don't know if this is actually around anymore. But um, it's a really nice wool. I, I like it for socks. It's merino. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So it might not be like a workhorse yarn like a non-merino wool sock would be, but I find them to be very long wearing. Uh, we wear our socks a lot, my husband and I, and yeah, they just seem to work well for us. So I think something that's important with sock knitting especially I find with merino is gauge I think it's really important to get a nice tight gauge on your sock so that it is able to kind of felt together a little bit on the foot um, I find if you have a looser gauge what's happening is it's just rubbing friction almost all the time and doesn't have a chance to sort of like come together like wool wants to even when it's super wash treated it still wants to kind of come together a little bit um, yeah I'm probably not explaining that well I'm not the best at explaining things but having a tighter gauge so I used to knit on 2.5 millimeter needles and now I knit on 2.25 millimeter needles and just that little bit of a difference you know it makes my gauge I think it goes up at least like a stitch per inch um, you know so say from like a seven to like eight or nine stitches per inch and it just makes that much of a denser fabric and that's what I find is the key to making sure that your socks wear well I am kind of going through and wearing out all the socks that were knit a little bit looser and what I'm noticing is my newer socks that I've knit with the tighter gauge with the 2.25 millimeter needles they're just not wearing out nearly as quickly or in the same way um, what happens to me is like the entire foot of my sock will wear out almost all at once where like basically my whole footprint will be like super, super thin because, you know, I not so much anymore, but I was on my feet a lot for work and I would always wear them to work. So they do get worn out. But once once they have gotten to that point, I figure I've probably worn them hundreds of times and they can be repurposed into something else at that point, I think. I think I've, you know, can thank them for what they've done for me and, and give them another life as like a sock puppet or something like that. So yeah, let me know what, you know, what you do with your socks. If you have any tips for making your socks more hard wearing. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to know if you guys have any ideas. Like I know a lot of you out there have been knitting for a lot longer than I have. And yeah, you definitely notice these things over time with your knits. Like some of them last really well and some of them wear out and a lot of them have to do sometimes with yarn, but a lot of things are just technique. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, that was a random tangent on my socks. So, uh, Knit Picks Felici, <laughs> good stuff. I think <laughs> you may not agree with me, but I like Knit Picks Felici and, and also their Stroll sock yarn. I have no issues with it. Um, but you know, everybody's different. Everybody wears their clothing some people just are just hard on their clothing some people are not um, I don't put my socks in the dryer I think that makes a big difference I wash them in the washing machine but I pull them all out and line dry them so yeah let me know if you have any tips on that um, you know if you do darn your socks I've just found that darning on the bottom of my foot is just really uncomfortable for me so um, that might be my technique Maybe you have some tips for me. That'd be awesome. So um, something else I've been working on here. Uh, I've made this little stack of washcloths. So these are going to be going into our bathroom as just little washcloths. And our bathroom is currently like almost this color. 
uh, it's quite dark, but we're going to paint it probably like white or very close to white. And then we got towels in this color. So I think it'll be a pretty little stack uh, on the shelf in our new bathroom. Really excited. Just want to get around to painting it finally. Um, so this is Nitpicks Dishy. It's a very Nitpicks episode. And I bought these five colors together, I think, in a little set. So Nitpicks Dishy comes in 100 gram balls. Each one of these used about 30 grams. And this pattern is called the Copycat Dishcloth. It's by Michelle Krause. And I did mine just a little bit shorter in the center area than the pattern called for. But other than that, it's knit to pattern. And it's called the Copycat Dishcloth because it has these ridges down the side. Um, so it kind of looks like a dishcloth or a washcloth that you'd buy from the store that has that kind of indentation there. So yeah, these are really fun to knit. I knit them on um, US 7 4.5 millimeter needles and they don't take too long. You know, they're satisfying. You can, you can probably bang one out in like a couple hours maybe. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't bothering my shoulder quite so much to knit these ones for some reason even though there is some purling in them and I just kind of went slow and ended up with this little stack so that's nice you know even though I felt like I wasn't doing a lot of knitting or making a lot of progress on my bigger projects having a few smaller things sprinkled in there gives you like that sense of accomplishment that is you know kind of nice And then, um, where are they? Oh, there it is. <laughs> so this, uh, I started just the other day. Now that I'm feeling like I can knit a bit more, I got really excited and I cast on, um, these are my minis from Stress Knits Christmas. What was it? It was their seven day advent see if that'll focus. I have a ring light going today so hopefully you like the lighting here. I think the combination of the natural light plus the ring light is um, is good. <laughs> so let me know if you agree. I like it. So this is my Stress Knits Yarn 7 Day Advent and I originally purchased the Ocean Drive Socks pattern by Megan Nodecker. Um, she's got the Pip and Pin podcast. She's also in like close to me. She's on the mainland, the lower mainland. Um, so anyways, I was using the Ocean Drive socks pattern, which has um, little scallops that go in between each set of stripes. But unfortunately, with this yarn, because this yarn has so many of the similar tones, you know, like they're all different colors, but each each yarn has some of the other tones in it. Like they're designed to go together, right? So what happens with that is they make beautiful stripes. You can see these are gorgeous little stripes, but if you try and do any sort of color work, it just gets really muddy. Um, so I ended up, I had done, I think I had started this, this scallop and I just realized that it wasn't gonna look how I wanted it to look. And so I decided to do just like a simple slip stitch thing here. You can see I've slipped the every sixth stitch here when I change color so that you have this little bit of a little indentation. You can, you can barely see it in some spots, but it's a little more clear in real life. Well, that's pretty good. So anyway, so I decided to save the Ocean Drive socks pattern for something with a bit more contrast. Um, maybe I'll use scraps or something like that. And I just wanted this just to be beautiful the way it is because the yarn's so, so pretty and it's kind of special to get this advent. Sorry about all my ends. Really happy with these. Um, yeah, I have not woven any of my ends and they're all hanging. And I was actually talking to a friend about this and they were suggesting some tutorials for knitting in your ends as you go. Um, I'm trying to remember which one they recommended to me. Um, I'll pop it down in the 
in the description below if you're interested. And then the other one that I know everyone's been talking about lately is the, the Weaven Steven method, which is um, Steven West from Westnets. And he also has awesome tutorials. So I think I'm gonna have to look that up because I have so many ends to weave in. Like there's, you know, two ends at every color change. And I think I've knit like two of them in so far. So <laughs> I'm, I need to do something about this or I'm gonna have a big mess on my hands that I don't wanna deal with at the end, weaving in, you know, a hundred ends on my socks. So yeah, I'm using this dark brown for the heels and the cuff and the toe. I'm doing my Fish Lips Kiss heel, which I quite like, fits me well. And yeah, I think I'm just doing nine rounds of each color before I switch. And then, like I said, I'm slipping every like sixth stitch on that first round of the new color. And I think that's something that I got from Amy Florence. It's uh, it's like a little technique that's been going around the knitting world for a while, but I think it originally came from Amy Florence in the Stranded podcast. Um, so I have stock in the shop. I know I tell you guys I'm doing updates on certain days, but I don't. I don't usually sell out. Sometimes I sell out, but. Um, what am I trying to say? There's always stuff in the shop. <laughs> So don't feel like you have to like wait for an update. Um, please go and have a tour through. I try and keep a variety of things in there all the time. So yeah, I just wanted to show you some of the things that were still in from the last um, rainbow update because I think I just showed you some of the fabrics for those. Maybe I had these bags done. I think I had some of the bags done. Either way, I wanted to show you some of these. Um, that were still available in the shop and there's still some there's still some rifle paper company prints I think there's one zebra print bag yeah so there's a few things in there have a look but so I have this sock size one that's left these are all Alice and Glass rainbow fabrics and they're just so beautiful I love this one if I didn't have so many of my own sock size bags already I would probably be keeping one of these um, there's a little bit of rainbow in this lining print too. So this is my original sock size. It is my favorite size. And try and stock some of those always in the shop. These are also a sock size, but I did them with a little patchwork on the one side. So these are just the corners of the bags. You know, when I box the corners out, I took them and made a little patchwork. They're just plain um, linen on the background. They've got my cork leather tag. This cork leather tag is from um, Brick Bubble, which is out of Alberta. And yeah, just lined with this nice black on the inside. And they're, they're basically the same size as my sock size. They might be a tiny bit wider. Yeah, just because I was trying to accommodate the patchwork. And then I did this one as well. So these ones I definitely didn't show because I whipped them out like really, really quickly right before I had to put the update up. So they're really similar but different color zippers. One of them's purple, one of them's coral. And then um, for other zippers, these are the large, um, are these large? No, I changed my sizes a while ago. I changed my sizes like a year ago and it still messes me up. So these are my medium zipper bags. Um, they are both done with the Alice in Glass Rainbow. I've got one in the light colorway and one in the dark colorway. And then um, just really nice kind of coordinating fabrics on the inside. I think I chose colors for both of these. And then this is another like Alice in Glass print as well. So um, yeah, these are a great size as well. They are my go-to for a slightly larger project. Like I have my seven minis for my stress knits in this bag. This is the old Alice in Glass medallion print. This is one that I screwed up, so I kept it for myself. <laughs> so yeah, so I like this size for, you know, shawls or like baby sweaters or something that's maybe going to be a little bit more bulky or you're going to have a little bit more yarn than like a sock in the beginning. Um, they're a great size for that. So that's like my medium. So they're about 11 by 11, I think, 11 inches by 11 inches. And then there's a couple finch buckets left in the shop. So this is the Stitch Mischief finch bucket pattern. Um, I do the midi size and they are huge. So the thing about these bags is they're they're very wide. 
um, across the top, but they also are boxed really, really deep. So they end up turning into this big cube. You can fit a lot of yarn in these. And this is in that same light colorway. I do pockets running down one side, so you can um, put your pattern folded in half here, and then there's two smaller pro uh, pockets on either side for, you know, for your notions or just little bits and bobs. And then there's this one as well that's available. So yeah, I really was really happy with the response to the last update. I really appreciate all you guys shopping and you know your lovely messages and tagging me. Um, it's great. It makes me feel pretty special. <laughs> So um, I just wanted to let you know that there are still a few things and I really want to avoid that kind of um, that mad dash, you know, to try and buy everything before it disappears. So that's why I don't usually like it's a combination of like the reason that I don't tell you what time the updates coming out is a combination of I never know what like I like to give myself if I needed a little bit of time in the morning of the update if I need to kind of tweak things or retake photos or anything like that. So, you know, I, and also I just don't want that, um, I don't want that urgency and I don't want people to get like necessarily cart jacked or anything like that. So just keep an eye on my Instagram. Um, if you do want to catch an update, I always post as soon as things appear on Etsy. That's actually another reason why I don't do the timed updates anymore is that sometimes Etsy takes a few minutes to load up the new items now it used to be almost instantaneous and now it's kind of like sometimes some of the things will show up and then some of the other new things won't show up so that's just another reason um why i don't do it <laughs> i had a point there and i've totally lost it um oh that's right so when i see that things are available and visible on Etsy for you as a consumer, then I would immediately go and I post on Instagram. So if you are looking to stay, you know, informed, or if you are looking for a particular update, you can always turn on post notifications on Instagram. Um, I'll have a link tree down below with my Instagram. It's I Heart You, and the Etsy shop is also I Heart You. And this Friday, I am planning on just gone through all my Tula Pink fabric. Tula Pink does a lot of animal prints, a lot of whimsical prints, bright colors, really beautiful fabric. Um, so I went through all my Tula Pink fabrics and I pulled just a whole bunch of different things. So that's um, what I'm going to put in the shop on Friday. Um, they're mostly like small or scrappy pieces that I have left. So that's going to be one of those things where I won't have more of these. A lot of the prints that I've pulled out have been out of print for years so it's not going to be a huge update I'm just going to work with the fabric I have so I don't know if there's going to be any finch buckets but there will be a variety of really beautiful bags in there so uh, look forward to that that's going to be this Friday um, what are we today we're the 16th yeah so that's going to be the 19th of March crazy -y. and yeah, I'm really enjoying finding my groove again <laughs> after the new year. I know a lot of people have been kind of saying how they've been, they struggled a little bit this new year. And yeah, I'm really finding my groove again in getting into my work days and things. Uh, working from home has been a really interesting transition. And uh, yeah, we're coming up on like, it's like been 10 months since I kind of reopened the Etsy shop as my full-time business. So just wanted to thank you for your support over the year and supporting the YouTube channel as well. This is great. Like being able to connect has been so awesome for me. Uh, definitely like something that I felt like was missing a little bit on my Instagram was just that direct connection where I can basically just kind of ramble <laughs> to you guys. But I love the, I love the chats. I love the going back and forth. Um, so please keep the comments coming. And um, I probably should be asking you to subscribe and like every video. You know, if you like the video, you know, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay, um, if you want to see my new episodes when they come up and stuff like that, um, hit the subscribe button. I'm almost at 2,500 subscribers, and that's just so exciting. So I'm hoping 
that maybe over the next week I'll hit 2,500 subscribers and I think I'm going to do like a coupon code or like a thank you um, in my next episode. Uh, the other thing I want to get started on is a new knit along. So I'm not going to announce that today because I haven't quite finalized what I'm doing yet. Um, but it will definitely be up. I'm going to plan on doing um, a recording next week as well for Tuesday. And yeah, and I think then I'll, I'll be able to figure out what I want to do. But I think it's going to be socks. I think it's going to be some sort of like scrappy or stripy socks knit along. Uh, so let me know what you think of that. If you have any other Cal ideas, I just sent off the mini skein set this week to the winner of, what was it called? The Fresh Start Cal that we started in January. That ran January, February. So thanks to everyone who entered that. And uh, yeah, congratulations to the winner. Hopefully that um, prize package arrives soon. It's going a long way from... Um, one continent to another. So I hope that shows up soon. And yeah, so I guess I'll just kind of wrap it up here. I'm just rambling, but what did I want to say? I wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to like let you know that next episode I'll have a coupon code if we hit 2,500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the little bell, not the bell. What do you call it? I've been watching too many influencers. Hit the... <laughs> hit the subscribe button and uh, I guess hit the bell if you want to hit the bell too. I like, I like having the notifications when other people have posted. So yeah, anyways, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you are happy and safe and I hope that, you know, the weather, the changing of the seasons is starting to hit you in a positive way, whether, you know, you're in the Northern or the Southern hemisphere. And uh, yeah, just take care and maybe next time I'll convince Sammy to come and visit and sit on the couch again. He doesn't like doing what he's told, so we'll just have to deal with him. Okay, take care. 